Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. It's uh, nice to see you all here. Um, would you guys stand with me and we'll uh, start with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, I just want to praise you and thank you for this day. Um, thank you for the blessing of the moisture. Thank you for this beautiful day. And I ask that you help all of our stresses of the week to melt away as we open our hearts and our minds and our, lift our voices to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Hmm. At this time, I'd like to dismiss the children for Children's Church, and you guys can go ahead and greet each other. Just going to give you a few announcements before we get started. You got a wonderful day. Baby dedications are always good. We have one of those again this week. Love those. But it's so good to see everybody here, the families that are here today. And we're just you know glad that you've come to worship and just to see what God has for you today. And those online, we're glad they're joining us as well. And just a few things I want to highlight. You know, Easter is coming. It's hard to believe that we're, we're not too far away. But we have the Living Last Supper presentation. There's... 12 guys got stuff ready to go. Linda's been working hard on this. And so next Sunday, make sure you come for it's going to be a treat. As long as we can all remember our lines. That's going to be the... <laughs> but come next week, a powerful time with the choir and the Living Last Supper. And we're going to have a little devotion after that. So I want to encourage you to come for that. And then also the Easter services. Make sure you come. Plan that in there. We're going to have breakfast burritos. It's going to be great. So check your bulletin. There's a whole lot of stuff with the Easter events, but you know stuff for the kids on Easter morning is going to be great. So make sure you plan on coming. And I also want to let you know, Virginia Bailey passed away. So we need to be in prayer for her family. But we're going to have an open house on Thursday, 2 to 4, in the Memorial Building. So Walt's back here. I see him today. And so we're praying for Walt and the family, but we're going to have an open house. And Virginia said, no funerals. Nope, you get together, you have a meal, and spend time laughing and together. She didn't want anybody crying and mourning, is what she said. So we're going to miss her deeply, but 
we're going to have an open house two to four Thursday. And so second part of that announcement is if you're one who comes to men's group on Thursday, there will be no men's group this week and no men's group this week. So plan on coming by, saying hi to Walt and the family and, and having some time together there. So that's my announcements for this morning. I'm going to invite the men to come forward for the morning offering. Jerry's going to bless the offering. Father God, uh, we give you all the praise and the glory today, and we thank you for this opportunity to give back from all the blessings that you've given us, and uh, we know that everything we have comes from you, and we pray that you would use this offering to uh, further the gospel, uh, the truth, uh, that uh, you sent your son to die on that cross for our sins, and uh, to give us hope to be with you through that, Father. And Again, we thank you for this offering and ask you to bless it in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. for the doxology, please. standing and we have um, two hymns they're not up here in front of me so I've already forgotten the names of them but anyway the first hymn
Remain standing. Yeah. Will you move that back? Watch your eye back. All right, good singing. Good morning. <laughs> good singing and good morning. Hope everybody's had a great week. Good to see everybody in the house of God. Ronnie and Jessica Yamati, yeah, go ahead and come on up here. Let me see if I can find room to put all this stuff. <laughs> Now, this is a special time. Hey, little John, little John, big John. He get, he's big brother John now, isn't he? This is a, this is a special time for you, for you as a family, and of course, it's a special time for me as a pastor. And two, ba two baby dedications in three weeks, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know, that, it represents life, the seasons of life. And, uh, you know, one of the things I was thinking, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And whenever you have babies in the church, that means there's life in the church, right? And let me just say, I'm one of those pastors that, that I don't get upset when babies cry in the church, okay? Doesn't bother me. I can, be, I can, I can preach, but uh, we welcome the little babies in the church, right? We welcome the children and the babies and... Uh, and it's my privilege to pray, and we don't want this just to be a ritual, a ritual. We want this to be a blessed time that we, when I, when I pray, I believe God answers my prayers, and I, I, I truly believe that. I believe in the, the laying on of hands. I believe it's, there's, there's power imparted, and especially before God's, God's people, the church, the Bible says, where two or more agree is touching anything, it shall be done. And so, I want to pray right now. And uh, we're going to pray for John, and we're going to bless little Charlotte. And um, I love just as a church family, is, you know, when you, when you reach your hand out, it's a sign of blessing. And that's, that's what they did in the old days. They would bless. That This means blessing. And if you bless this family, I know you love Ronnie and Jessica and the family. If you bless them while I pray, would you just stretch out your hand like this, saying, we bless you. We bless you. So let's pray. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we know that there's power in the name of Jesus. And specifically, I want to come to you right now for little baby Charlotte. We're believing right now as she's being held in her mother's arms. We believe, we believe Father, that she is blessed and highly favored. We believe that she has been chosen by you before the foundation of the world. You knew her. You knew her. You've got a plan for her life, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over her life. We pray your protection over her life, Father. You see the, the end from the beginning. We know that, that you are smiling down at Ronnie and Jessica being, being the, the godly parents, presenting their baby to you. So, Father, we bless baby Charlotte. We believe that when she comes of age to understand, we believe that she's going to receive Jesus as personal Savior, and she's going to follow Jesus, even all the way out. You, you've already prepared the man, Father, the godly man for her to marry. I know Ronnie don't want to think about that right now, but you've got it planned, and Father, we're just blessing. And Father, I want to bless John, too. We bless little John, Father. We thank you, Father, that he's going to be a, a good big brother. He's going to give his life to you. And Father, we bless Ronnie. We bless Jessica in Jesus' name. We're believing, Father, that they're, as they raise their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, Father, they're, they're going to do their best, and they're going to leave the rest up to you. 
They're going to do their best, and they're going to leave the rest up to you. In the ups and the downs, you're going to be with them. In the times when they feel like a failure as a parent, you're going to still be with them, and you're going to encourage them. And we know that you are going to bless this family. And we love you, and we love them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, John. Amen. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's, that's wonderful. Turn to John 12, if you would. When Pastor Scott was, he was mentioning all the exciting events that are coming the next couple weeks uh, with Palm Sunday next week, and uh, looking forward to that, looking forward, of course, to all the Easter services, the Good Friday service, and um, that's exciting. I'm really looking forward to, to celebrating my first Palm Sunday here with you and, and all the Easter events, and um, I don't, you, you'll have to prepare me and, and, and what to expect. You know, I, I know that normally at Easter time, just in my experience, many years of pastoring and growing up in the church, Easter time is usually a time when you, you have a good crowd. You get a lot of people that'll come to church, families will come to church, some people will come to church that haven't been to church maybe since Christmas time. And, uh, and I learned something from Michelle's pastor, Michelle's pastor uh, back in Jacksonville, and I love what he said. He would prepare, and this was a, this is a huge church. He would prepare his church. He, here's what he would say when Easter was coming. He would say, company's coming. <laughs> and I thought that was good. Because what do you do when company comes? If a guest is coming, you're going, you're going to roll out the red carpet, right? You're going to make them feel welcome. You're going to, I mean, you'll clean, tidy up the house a little bit. But I just love that analogy. So for home folks, I'm going to suspect that there's going to be company coming. So what does that mean? That means we want to welcome them in, right? We want to welcome them in. Um, let them, if, you know, normally, normally when company comes in churches, what I've seen is usually people who don't come to church much, they like to sit in the back a little bit, you know. So, so if, 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 you, if somebody's seat, sitting in your seat, don't get upset, please, on Easter. <laughs> Scooch in a little bit. Because guess what? That person may, may have never have been to church before. And we don't want them to leave and say, in that Kersey Community Church, boy, there's, you know, they, they, they didn't welcome me, welcome me in. We, we want them to feel welcome. We want them to receive Jesus. Show them what the love of Jesus is all about, right? And so, uh, looking forward to that. John chapter 12, since uh, next week is Palm Sunday and we got a special treat, uh, the program, I'm going to do, I guess, a little Palm Sunday message, but this is going to be a different type of Palm Sunday message. John 12 12 through 13 says, The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees, and they went out to meet him, and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. So this is the scene of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, which we're going to celebrate next week. Jesus, He's entering Jerusalem. He's uh, that long winding trail down the Mount of Olives. I've walked that trail many times. It's a steep winding trail down the Mount of Olives. You pass at the bottom of the Mount of Olives is the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus passed, rode that donkey past the Garden of Gethsemane, went across the Kidron Valley and into the old city of Jerusalem. The crowd is rejoicing. They're, they're shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna means God save us. They're giving him an entrance fit for a king. It's a joyous day for Jerusalem. It's a joyous day for Jesus. It's a joyous day for the followers of Jesus as, as they're celebrating, as they're waving palm branches, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm going to come back to that scene at the end of this message, but I want you to go to Leviticus 23. <laughs> Leviticus, yes, there is a book called Leviticus, <laughs> which is not preached from that much. But Leviticus 23, I just want to, I just want to look a little bit this morning at what, what's the meaning of the palm branch? What's the palm branch represent? Well, it actually goes back to an instruction. Leviticus is the, the, the book of laws and instruction. It goes back to an instruction that God gave to the Jewish people 
uh, as they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, you could say, is Israel's Thanksgiving. Uh, so, it take, took place in the fall. Leviticus 23, verse 40 says, And you shall take for yourselves... On the first day, the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, boughs of leafy trees, willows of the brook, willows, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. This particular, it's also the Feast of Tabernacles, also called the Feast of Booths. It took place in the fall. And, and as a matter of fact, Jewish people still celebrate this today where they live in huts. And, or, or, you know, they, they'll camp out in the huts. What this represents is this represents God's deliverance from Egyptian slavery, but it also represents God's provision in the wilderness, how they camped in the wilderness. So, this is how they celebrate their thanksgiving for His provision in the wilderness. But, but, but it says uh, that um, God says, I want you to bring the fruit of the trees. I want you to bring bows or wreaths, the wreaths. But then He, he says they're to bring palm branches and willow branches. That's what I want to focus on, palm branches and willow branches, and there to rejoice and praise and worship the Lord. Bring these branches before the Lord and worship. I'm preaching on the palms and the willows. The palms and the willows. These are two completely different types of trees. And, and, and as you see, I've got some palms, got some palm branches, not from Florida, from Amazon. I got them from Amazon. <laughs> I got some willow branches. Oh, there willow, there's willow trees in Colorado, right? I know there ain't no palm trees. But, uh, but I got some willows and I got some palms. I got some palms. And so, the, these are two completely different types of branches. To me, it's a picture of two different seasons of life. The palms, Palm season, the palm days, and the willows, the willow days, the palm, the palm. The palm, and, and I've got a few little notes for, for your insert. The palm represents joy and victory, and prosperity, and strength. That's why they're waving palm branches before Jesus. It represents joy, it's celebration, it's victory. The king is coming. The king is entering the, the city. He's, he's coming in victory. He's coming in strength. When I think of palm, what do you, what do you think of when you see a palm? Florida? <laughs> you said it, not me. You said it. What's that? The palm of your hand. Okay. Well, the palm, I think of happiness. I do. I, I, think of, I think of happiness. I think of you know, the palm trees, the, the, the palms. How many of you like to go to the beach? Do you, you, you like to go to the beach, go to the Caribbean, go to Florida? Life, uh, yeah, you like the beach. The sand and it, 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 Kenny Chesney, no shoes, no shirt, no problem. Just, just on, the, on the beach. On the beach, laying between a, a hammock. I don't drink, but if I was a drinker, a pina colada, I mean, just life is good on, on the beach with, with the palm tree. See, Palm Sunday is, is a day of joy. It's, it's a day of celebration. That's the palms. I think of good times. Celebrate good times. Good times. Life is good. The bills are paid. Healthy. Family's getting along. It's, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, this is good. The Broncos are actually winning some games. Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. But then, but then the Jews, they're to, they're to bring willows before the Lord. Not just the palms, but they're to bring the willows before the Lord. When, when I, I see a willow, th this is a weeping willow. When I think of a willow, it, it, it's droopy, it's, it's dreary, you know, it's, it looks depressed, you know, like it, it's crying. The willow, the willow represents distress, sorrows, 
trials, sadness. When I think of willows, I think of tough times, the opposite of the palm times. Tough times, sad times, times of sickness, times of death, mourning the loss of a loved one as Walden, others in the church recently, we've done a few funerals, have, are mourning the loss of a loved one, grieving the loss of a loved one. That's willow days. That's days of sorrow. Days of sorrow. When I think of uh, the willow, I, I think of sickness. I think of uh, financial issues, maybe family issues, maybe marital issues. When I think of a willow, I, I think of, you could, some say we're in willow days as a nation. <laughs> you know, uh, just, just tough times, tough times, record inflation, wars everywhere. <laughs> Officials, politics, fighting, fighting, there's, there's no unity, just, just a, a, a tough time. But, but there's a picture here, the palms and the willows, a picture of the reality of life. And this is just going to be, I mean, this isn't going to be a deep theological message. I, I, this, I, I just feel led to encourage some people today. This is just going to be a simple, encouraging message today. Because life constantly represents both the palms and the willows, right? It's not always palm days. There's a lot of willow days. It's interesting, and, you know, some, sometimes, the, and, and often it's simultaneous. They operate simultaneous with each other. The, the palms and the willows, one branch represents celebration. The other branch represents sorrow. One branch represents health. One branch represents sickness. One branch represents prosperity. The other represents sorrow. One is victory. The other is defeat. And you're either in good days, the palm days when life is good, or, you, or you're having a bad day when life is not so good, when life is not so well. So it's interesting that God says, I want you to bring, I want you to bring both of these branches before me. I want you to bring both of these branches before me as an act of worship. I want you to bring the happy branch, and I want you to bring the sad branch. Why? What's the lesson here? Because regardless of the kind of day you're in, whether you're in a palm day, a happy day, or whether you're in a willow day, a, a, a sad day, regardless of the day you're in, we still got a reason to praise God. We can wave both branches before the Lord and give Him praise, can't we? Regardless of the kind of day you're in, we still have a reason to give God thanks and praise because the Lord is just as worthy of praise and thanksgiving and worship in the palm days and the willow days as He is in the palm days. He's just as worthy of worship in these days right here as He is in these days. Amen? He's still worthy. He's still worthy of worship. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. The, the prophet Habakkuk says, Even though the fig tree have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty. In other words, even though we're in willow days. <laughs> I love verse 18, yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. He's saying despite my circumstances, despite if I, I lose it all, if I lose everything, if the crops fail, if all my cattle die, if, if I lose, despite all that, I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. He, he, look, he's not rejoicing because he lost it all. He's rejoicing because he serves the God who, in spite of it all, is still on the throne. He's still the God of salvation. You know what? And if we have salvation, that's all we need anyways, right? Yet I will rejoice. Which leads to another point. Take heed in the palm days. Because they can quickly turn to willow days. Take heed in the palm days because they can quickly turn 
to willow days. Isaiah chapter 15 verse 7 says, Therefore the abundance they have gained and what they have laid up, they will carry away, they as the enemy will carry away to the brook of the willows. The context is, is Isaiah is prophesying that the Assyrians, they're about to defeat Moab. They're about to, to take Moab captive. All the wealth that the Moabites have acquired and, and, and they've stolen, they've robbed, they, they've built all this wealth up. The Syrians are about to carry all that away to the willows. Here's the principle. The principle is this. One moment, you can be a palm days when everything is great, perfect health, family's good, Bills are paid, but the next moment <laughs> you can be carried away down to the willows in a van down by the river by the willows for all Saturday Night Live. That's the thing that popped into my mind, in my mind when he said carried down in a van down by the river. One unexpected phone call. One doctor diagnosis. I lost a poem. One meeting. One encounter with an individual, one cell phone call can turn a palm day into a willow. See, the problem is most people react when, when, when they're carried down to the willows, when a willow day comes, the problem is most people react in fear and worry and doubt instead of respond in faith. Instead of respond to it with, with, with faith and, and praise. And, and, and the reason is most people when they're in the palm day, well, I don't want to say most people, it's easy when you're in the palm days to forget about God. It's easy when you're in good times to, to let your relationship with the Lord slide a little bit when everything's going well. When life, is, when I, when, when, when life is good, it's easy to let our guard down a little bit. You know, I've had so many people through the years, they'll, they'll, they're in a willow day, and they'll come to me for counseling, and, and we'll pray together. We'll get them back on track, and, and they start coming to church, and, and they get faithful to church, and, and life becomes good again, and you can just see God starts blessing. They get involved in the church. I mean, they're active. They're faithful. They're coming to Bible study. You can tell they're praying and reading their Bible. And in life, be, God starts doing miracles. But, but, but I've had this so often. It's, so, it's one of the most discouraging things as a pastor. All of a sudden, once life becomes good and they get back into a palm day, you look at, where are they? they you don't find them again until the next will of day comes. Because it's so easy in the good days, when, when you're in the palm days, when you're in the palm days, it's, it's so easy on Sunday morning to hook up the boat and go down to the lake in the palm days. It's, it's so easy in the palm days to head up to the mountains on a Sunday instead of come to church. But it's in, I find it's, it's in, a, in the willow days is when we get desperate for God. Remember 9-11? Remember after 9-11, the willow day, the, the attack? I remember going into church. I couldn't even find a seat. The Sunday after 9-11. But now that America gets back into in the, the prosperity, oh, it's, it's easy to forget about God. See, we better take heed and prepare and stay close to God in the palm days. If anything, when life is good, if, if life, that, that, that's when you really, you better start really preparing <laughs> You better draw close to the Lord because just as quickly as you're in a palm day, a will a day can come. Which leads to my last point. Number three is take heed in the palm because the will can come. Here, here, here's, here's, here's my last point. Take heart in the will a day. Take heart in the will a day because God can quickly turn the willow back into the palm. Take heed in the palm days, because he can go down. Take heart if you're in the willows, because God can quickly turn things around. Just because you're in a willow doesn't mean it's the end. Take heart. Take heart. There's a sad scene, Psalms 137, when Israel was taken captive by Babylon. Psalms 137 verse 1 says, By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion, Jerusalem. It's burned, crumbled. 
Verse 2, we hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. We hung our harps. The Babylonians had ravished Jerusalem, burned the temple down. Solomon's temple has been burned. They've lost their place of worship. The families are scattered. They've lost everything. They've taken captive. They, they've carried away the Jews to Babylon, carried away the possessions. Neb Nebuchadnezzar, he ransacked the, the temple and he stole all the temple uh, artifacts and, and, and the holy belongings of the temple and, and he carried them away to Babylon. Babylon, I read in that day, was known for its abundance of willow trees. And the Israelites who were known to be worshipers, who were known to be musicians, they were, they were taunted by the Babylonians. The Babylonians are like, what, let's see you worship now. We've burned your temple. We've burned your place of worship. There's no reason to, to worship now. You don't have a place to worship anymore. Israel, verse 4, Israel reacts instead of responds. In fact, they react in worry and fear because they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Israel's like, there's no reason to sing anymore. No reason to, to worship anymore. There's no reason to play music. Our, our place of worship has been destroyed. And it says they hung their harps on the willows. They hung their instruments on the willow tree, signifying we're done. We're done. You know, I just want to, I just want to encourage you, if, if you're in a willow day, if you're in a willow day, take heart. Take heart. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't hang your harps on the willow. Take heart. The, the hanging of the harps, it, it represents me saying, I no longer have a reason to thank God. It represents I no longer have a reason to count my blessings, to worship, to praise. When I was a worship pastor in San Diego, I'll, I'll never forget one, one of the drummers. I was, it was a tough time. I was going through a tough time. Just uh, some things going on. And, and that drummer came up to me and he said, Pastor Ray, don't ever lose your song. I never forgot that. Don't ever lose your song. Don't ever lose your song. You lose your song. You lose your song. You lose your meaning. Your song is your, is your praise. Your song is your worship. Don't hang your praise on the willows. Don't lose your song. Keep singing. Keep rejoicing. Keep praising God in the midst of the willow because just as quickly as the palm turned to willow, and I know once you get in those willow days, it seems like you're going to never come out of them. But I promise you, we serve the God of the turnaround who ju just as quickly as you got in, He can quickly bring you out. Don't lose your song. I love the opening verse. So, Psalms 137, they gave up, they quit, we're no longer singing, we're no longer rejoicing, but I love 138. Psalms 138, the very beginning, it opens up, I will praise you with my whole heart. I, that's a turnaround right there. I love that. They go from hanging their harps to depression. I will praise you, Psalms 138, with my whole heart. And I love this, verse 2. It doesn't say I will worship you in the holy temple. I will worship toward your holy temple. Toward your holy temple. I will praise your name. In other words, I can praise the Lord just as much away from the temple, outside the temple, as I can inside the temple. I can praise the Lord as much from Babylon as I can from Zion, it, it, from, from Jerusalem. Don't let your circumstances, that's the point, don't let your circumstances dictate when and where you worship. Things might have changed. Circumstances might have changed for you. The days might have changed. But let me remind you, God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's just as faithful to you in the willow days as he is in the palm days. I think of Paul and Silas, Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas, they're in prison. 
They're in a willow day. They're in prison. Verse 25, I love verse 25, says, at midnight. The darkest point, at the darkest hour, at midnight, they began to sing. They began to sing hymns. They began to praise the Lord. You know the story. God sent an earthquake, shook the prison. They were released. They were set free. God quickly turned that will a day back into a palm day because of their worship, because of their, their praise got God's attention, and he set them free. Look, get this, get this. When they were in prison, they didn't beg God to get them out of prison, did they? They didn't beg God to get them out of prison. They chose to praise God while they were in prison, while they were in chains, while they were in the midst of, of their bondage. Their praise got the Lord's attention. God moved, opened the doors, turned the willow day into a palm day. The point is, don't lay your song down in the willow. Don't give up. Keep praising the Lord. God can just as quickly turn your willow days into a palm day. Go back to John 12, 13 as we wind this down. John 12, 13, Palm Sunday. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, they were celebrating, they were waving their palm branches. Hosanna, save us, God, save us. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They're waving, they're, save us, we need you, help us, we love you, you're our king, we worship you. But you know what happened a few days later, don't you? Jesus' palm turned to willows. Turned to willows as he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was dragged before the high priest. He was accused of blasphemy. He was then, he then stood trial before Pilate, before the multitude of people. I mean, think about this. The same people who were shouting, God save us, are now shouting, kill him. Kill him. They're waving, they're, they're no longer waving palm branches. They're waving their fists. Crucify him. You've read this. Crucify him. On the palm day, they gave him a king's welcome. On the willow day, they gave him a criminal's exit. He rode in as royalty. Now he's exiting as a renegade. He rode in on a donkey. A donkey's a beast of burden. Now he's exiting, bearing the burden of his own cross. The palm has turned to willows. He's no longer hearing cheers, the crowd cheering. It's now jeers. It's cursing. It's screaming. It's, it's blasts. It's insults. But even in the worst will a day in history, Jesus didn't hang his harp on the willows. Hebrews 12, verse 2, Jesus didn't give up. He didn't quit. He took heart. He took heart. Hebrews 12, 2, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. On the worst willow day in history, Jesus took heart because he knew that on the other side of this willow, on the other side of this willow is a palm. On the other side of pain, on the other side of disgrace, on, on the other side of pain is victory. On the other side of this cross is a crown. On the other side of the cross is, is, is a crown and, and a throne where he's seated on high. On the other side of the cross, on the other side of him dying on the cross is a world of his followers that would be saved. And think about this, on Palm Sunday when they cried, Hosanna, God save us, that week earlier, when they cried, God save us, they didn't realize that the only way they could be saved was through Jesus facing that willow day. If Jesus never faced that willow day, we wouldn't be able to wave our palms, would we? He had to go to the cross. He had to go to the cross. 
He had to... Look, look, Jesus, listen. Jesus didn't just die for us. He died as us. It's called substitution. He took what we deserved in order to give us what he deserved. He had to die. He had to bear the, the weight of the sins upon his shoulders. He had to do it in order to save us, in order to bring us salvation. And because of what Jesus did for us in his will of days, those who put their trust in him can have peace and assurance and hope that he's going to be right beside us, carrying us through our will of days. Amen. And ultimately, the greatest hope and assurance we have is the hope of heaven, because that same king who went through that willow, who's now seated on the throne, that same king is going to return for his church, for his bride going to take us to heaven, going to take us to heaven where so many of your family and friends where Virginia's at right now going to take us to heaven and be with him forever. Hey, let me leave you with one verse, one, well, two verses, one scripture as we close. Revelation 7, verse 9. Revelation 7, 9. This is a scene that's a future scene that's going to take place. I don't know when, but it's going to take place. It's a vision that John saw. He says, After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count. We're going we're to be, those who put their trust in Jesus are going to be in that crowd. I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, nationality, tongue, all, all ethnic, all nationalities. They're standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? It's Jesus. They were clothed in white robes, and they were holding palm branches. Palm branches in their hands. That's going to be us one day. And they were shouting with a great roar, salvation, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. You know, the Palm Sunday crowd waved palm branches and shouted, God, save us. Here the multitude of heaven is waving palm branches and shouting, thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for what you did for me. Salvation comes from God and from the Lamb. And here, here's how I want to close this out. And it's just, the way I, it's just the way I read my Bible, okay? I like to draw, I can draw application from a lot of different, I can be encouraged from a lot of different places in Scripture. Now, now seeing the crowd, that's encouraging. Knowing that we're going to be in that crowd, that's encouraging. But, but here's what I noticed. Something is missing in their hands. What are they no longer holding in their hands? The willow. See, down here we have palms and willows. Man, mm. I like my brother says, man, I, he's told me before, I get, I get chills. I got chills when sometimes, uh, since the Holy Spirit. I got chills right now. Because <laughs> down here we have willows and palms. But in heaven, no more willows just palms. Come on, somebody. Somebody can give a, an old-fashioned <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> just palms. They're waving the palms because every day's a palm day. Every day's a palm day. Da down here, there's, there's worry, there's care, there's sickness, there's death, there's fighting, there's up in heaven, no more sickness, no more death, no more parting, no more sorrow. It's just palms, palms of victory, palms of, we ought to do that hymn. There's old hymn, palms of victory, singing and shouting. There's no more politics, hallelujah, up in heaven. 
there's no more Democrats and Republicans, the donkey and the elephant. It's just the lamb. No donkey, no elephant. The lamb. The lamb. That's it. One king. And that king's not going to ask you to vote on anything because he rules in righteousness. And, and, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. That's going to be us one day if you know Jesus as your Savior. But until then, until then, if you're in the will of day, you got that hope. You still got the king with you. Even in your, if you're in that willow sorrowful day, you still got peace. You still got assurance. You still got hope. God's going to be with you. In the midst of that willow, you, you, can, you got a reason to give God thanks and to give God praise. I want to ask you to bow your heads, please. And we're going to cl close it with a hymn in just a moment. But, but while your heads are bowed, maybe you've never received Jesus as your Savior. You can't earn your salvation. You can only receive what Jesus has done for you through his cross and his resurrection. As I stated, he didn't just die for you. He died as you. He died in your place. And you've got the opportunity to put your faith in Jesus right now. If you've never received Jesus as Savior, I don't know what kind of day you're in, but I, I know quickly in the midst of that will of day, I know when you get the Lord in your heart and the Holy Spirit comes to reside and you trust in Him as your Savior, you can have peace. You can have joy in the midst of that will of day. Would you receive Jesus today? And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And to receive Jesus, just pray with me from your heart. The Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Pray, Jesus, I know you went to the cross for me and as me. I know you shed your blood for me. You took my place. I deserve to be there. But you took my place. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to come into my life. I give my heart to you. I want to live for you. I want to honor you all the days of my life. Just a simple, humble, repentant prayer before the Lord. God will hear you. God will save you. He will save you. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for just your sweet presence in this service today. Thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege to sing all these songs of worship, amazing love. How could it be that my king would die for me? We, have, we get to sing songs more about Jesus, more of his love. God, help us, to, help us to learn more about Jesus. We get to be encouraged from your word because we know this is what it's all about, eternity in heaven with you for those who receive Jesus. So I pray, Father, that this message would encourage people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I asked I ask Nancy to play What a Day That Will Be. Y'all know that old song, What a Day That Will Be? With my Jesus I shall see, and the praise team is up here. And I'm going to sing it with you, okay? So let's sing that song together.
God bless you all. Brother Chris, would you close in prayer? Heavenly Father, I just want to praise you and thank you for this day. Thank you for the message that Pastor Ray brought forth to us. I just ask that you be with us all as we go about our weeks and all the things that are upcoming. I just pray that we reflect on the things that we learned today. And I just ask for your blessing on our upcoming weeks. And thank you for the season and the fact that you sent your son for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You're dismissed.